Hey everyone, welcome to the Blitz Esports tier list. Today, we're taking a look at patch 8.15, which brings the rework to Kali, more changes to AD carry items, Kindred and Quinn nerfs, and a Lee Sin buff. Let's go over all the big changes, plus some counters to this meta's big threats. And for a full stat breakdown of each champion's pick ban and win rates, you can check out the Blitz desktop app here, also linked in the description. We're always updating it with the latest stats and builds, plus easy to read guides on each champion's power spikes, weaknesses, and how to counter them in lane. Let's start off our list by looking at top lane, where we should be seeing plenty of Quinn and some Poppy. Quinn is getting some nerfs to her base damage and a small nerf to the bonus damage on her passive procs. These nerfs will reduce her power a bit, but won't really affect how she dominates matchups in the top lane. Her range advantage and constant damage make it extremely hard to ever win trades against her. Over in the bottom lane is where it'll matter most, as the armor nerf is more noticeable there where she won't have the range advantage. The passive nerf will make her slightly less oppressive in lane, especially when she gets multiple procs in one trait. That said, she's getting a much cheaper Storm Razor with the new patch, and zeal items are also getting cheaper. That means Quinn can get to her item spikes earlier, which is what she wants to take over in the mid game. Because of all that, she's staying in god tier. Straight up countering Quinn in lane will be hard. If you're playing a melee champion, you'll probably need your jungler's help to really take advantage of her armor nerf. As for Poppy, she's not being touched in 8.15, but is moving because of the meta and some changes through patches 8.9, 10, and 12. There's more range on her passive now so that she can poke more often, and more range on her E to make her setups easier. Riot also made her opponents targetable when she uses her ult uncharged, which means it can be layered with her E and teammate damage. Riot also nerfed the resistance scaling on her W and buffed her damage ratios, which brought in more offensive builds with Black Cleaver and Iceborne Gauntlet, turning Poppy into a high CDR bruiser. Her play rate and win rate have been steadily rising for a few patches, and she does well into a lot of the most popular champions in the top lane. Her W is also great at flat out denying dashes, which a lot of the current meta champions seem to have. All of it's enough to bring her to A tier. It's likely you won't see Poppy being blind picked often, but if you do, Darius does a good job punishing her, and Garen and Singed are also great options to beat her in lane. Moving to the jungle, we'll be focusing on some Kindred updates and a big Lee Sin change. Kindred is getting a nerf to the attack speed scaling on W, as well as a cooldown on their ultimate. We're still keeping Kindred gods here though. Up until 8.13, W scaling was bugged and not even working to their benefit, and even then, they were doing great. Lowering it from 50% to 25% will mostly affect high attack speed builds with Blood Razor, but this doesn't change what Kindred does well. Fast and healthy clears, deceptively strong ganks, and damage that keeps them relevant throughout all stages of the game. Gragas is still a great counter pick since he has decent bursts and a tool to knock people out of Kindred's ultimate. High burst champions that can duel Kindred, such as Kane and Camille, are also great options. Lee Sin might be good too, with his new buffs. Speaking of Lee Sin, he's getting a big change to the second part of his Q. We ran some tests, and overall, this means he'll be doing more damage to targets that are already missing a good chunk of their health, and it'll be most noticeable against squishier champions. Here's an example of Lee Sin's damage against different health targets in 8.14, and how much damage he'll be doing on 8.15. He starts doing more damage when the targets are missing 15% health or more, and the lower they are, the more noticeable it is. All in all, it means he'll be able to snowball easier. With that said, Lee Sin's Q is losing some damage versus high health neutral monsters, which may make his clear slightly slower and will definitely be noticeable in his smite secures. Here's a damage comparison of his resonating strike versus a 20 minute Baron. So at the end of the day, a big change that's kind of a buff and Lee does move up from B to A tier. Now for the mid lane, where the focus goes towards Ari, Aurelia, and Fizz. Last tier list we touched on Ari and how her charm was getting a sizable buff. She's performing even better than expected, so we're moving her up once again, now to A. Ari is an extremely safe laner. She has sustain, wave clear, mobility, and good burst damage provided she hits her charm. Her charm is now a 1-point wonder which makes W the better option to skill second in all occasions. The 1.4 second charm makes her extremely strong at gank assist and roaming, and in the current meta, getting the drop on your opponent is mega valuable. Aurelia is getting moved down to B tier, but not so much because of the 8.15 changes. It might seem like 8.15 is shifting her damage away from burst and into more consistent auto-based damage. But the AD increase alongside a stronger passive means that her burst is mostly untouched. She still has auto attacks a lot in her burst rotations and Q applies her passive, meaning it makes up for the base damage nerfs on her Q and E. 
The ranged nerfs do hurt, and since W's damage doesn't scale with ranks anymore, she'll probably max E second now. With that said, we're moving her down mainly because of the meta. Ari and Orianna are examples of champions who are becoming more popular and do very well against her. And Aurelia now has a lot of matchups in the mid lane where she just loses. Finally, we want to touch on Fizz. He's getting strong buffs to his W and ult, but these mainly balance out the fact that he can't apply his W damage on his Q or ult anymore. These AP ratio increases look really good, and he's going to be great this patch, so we're keeping him A because in retrospect, he was predicted a little high last patch. Down in the bottom lane, AD carries are getting cheaper items in general, but less AD to compensate once they get to full build. This is overall a net positive for them in the early and mid game stages, with a very cheap one item spike in Storm Razor and cheaper Zeal items. These are overall good changes that should help the crit based AD carries, specifically Tristana, Caitlyn, and Vayne to name a few. With that said, we don't think this warrants moving them up quite just yet. There are non ADCs that benefit from these changes too. Yasuo is getting a cheaper IE and a cheaper Phantom Dancer. He's been performing incredibly in the bot lane for several patches and now he gets his core build cheaper by 200 gold. That means he's moving up a tier. Heimerdinger is also still doing very well. He hasn't been targeted by nerfs and generally does well versus traditional AD carries since they can't sustain against all his poke damage. On top of that, supports are losing a potion in their first buy, so they won't have as much sustain and Heimer will have an easier time poking them out of lane. Finally, there's the support role. The big change is an increase in starter item cost to 400 gold, which means supports can't start with a refillable potion or 3 health pots anymore. Sona was already between god tier and A tier for us. She's generally pretty simple to play and has been performing well in most elos for several patches. She also scales extremely well with either enchanter or AP items. With this change, her poke now matters more, and the sustain she can provide is more impactful, so we're moving her up to god tier. As for counters, Sona's weakness is always going to be her squishiness and how bad positioning can dictate her early game, so picking all in supports to abuse that is generally a good idea. Try to get a lane lead with picks like Thresh, Leona, or Alistar. While Sona is moving up to god tier, Fiddlesticks is moving down from it. The mana cost increase on his E should limit his early game poke quite a bit, not to mention he's also losing a potion for his own sustain. While Fiddlesticks does have access to drain, he rarely gets to use it in the bot lane to sustain himself, and with one less potion, he'll have to be more careful when stepping up to throw his spells. That said, he's still going to be incredibly oppressive and a 5 damage loss on Dark Wind won't mean that much. He's still a fantastic champion for solo queue. And that's it for the tier list, feel free to discuss or ask us any questions in the comments below. For more champion stats and guides from Blitz, download our desktop app for League of Legends. We not only tell you the best builds for your champion, who's hot and who's not, but also help you look up teammate stats and enemy playstyles, totally automatic, no typing required, as you go through champ select. Intrigued? Check it out at blitz.gg slash tierlist.